In case you haven't been keeping up with React 19 stuff, one of the cool new features is the inclusion of this title tag as a thing React itself can hoist to your head. Traditionally, if you were to just put a title tag somewhere in the DOM, it wouldn't work as the title for your, your browser tab. This has to be inside of a head tag and the head tag has to be separate from your body tag. So that wasn't great. As a result, a lot of things were created, specifically packages like Helmet, which would let you do a capital H head thing. You also have it in Next.js as well. So you could import head from Next and then put things like a title in here and it will hoist them. There are problems with this though. And to solve those problems, specifically around streaming, which we'll get to in a minute, the React team decided to automatically hoist title tags, meta tags, and link tags for you. So these will now automatically move to the correct place, which is the head tag. If you wanna learn more about that, it's detailed in the blog post for the React 19 RC, support for document metadata, as they say here, Document metadata tags like title, link, and meta are reserved for placement in the head section of the document. The component that decides what metadata is appropriate for the app may be far from the place where you're rendering the head, or React does not render the head at all. This is also very common, where the head tag is rendered by static HTML from some other source. Before we dive into the code, let's quickly hear from our sponsor. You good, man? Yeah, I guess. I'm just trying to learn all the new stuff in React 19. Theo just put out a new video and I feel like I'm falling behind constantly. Theo? Who's that? He's a dev YouTuber with a mustache. Oh, do you mean the Primogen? No, he's a... Uh, actually, never mind. Seriously though, if you want to keep up with React without all the FOMO, you should check out Ken's new Epic React course. Ken's he does, right? I think Theo mentioned learning a bunch from him before. Still don't know who Theo is. Ken's great though. He makes the complexity of React way simpler to understand. This isn't your usual course either. It's built to replicate real work experiences. How realistic can it be? Aren't you just watching videos? Nope. Not only do you spend most of your time coding in their custom built app, they actually built full simulated team work experiences, just like you'll be doing in the real job. Thank you Epic React for sponsoring this video. I'm just gonna init a VDAP quick to show what I mean. If you look at the source for most React single page apps, like in this case, this is a standard Vite app. You look at the index HTML, the head tag is handled by Vite as an HTML file. The JavaScript, renders inside of the body in this root tag. So the JavaScript that you're rendering here doesn't make the head. You can still update it, you can still reach it dynamically from the JavaScript by hand, but by default, V doesn't generate a head based on the JavaScript code. It has one that's already pre-baked in the HTML. And this is incredibly, incredibly common. I would argue the vast majority of React apps right now work this way. They also call out libraries like React Helmet as a solution, as I mentioned before. NFL, is that? That's hilarious. I had no idea the NFL made React Helmet. What the fuck? What? What? I kind of get it, but like, what? Anyways, React Helmet's a package that lets you update the head tag from your dynamic JavaScript components anywhere in your app. But now, you don't need to use this just to update the head tag. If you throw the title in, React will handle that for you now. But this video isn't about how this works. This video is about drama. So where's the drama? Let me show you. So if we go back here in this example, we have a title tag in this blog post. But what if I had a separate component? We'll call it comments section. And this returns a div of comments, but it also happens to have a title tag in it that's, I don't know, comments section. If I mount this in here, what happens? What title gets set as the title on this page now? And this is where the drama begins. This tweet from Ryan Carniato sparked it because he found a tweet from May 3rd. The new React 19 meta feature does not dedupe meta tags, unlike React Helmet. For example, if you render multiple title tags, they will all appear in the document head. So if you have app title foo title, then page also has title in it. Both of those titles will now appear in the head tag. Whatever is rendered last is at the bottom. And whatever your browser decides to do with it is what your browser decides to do with it. And as Ryan said here, I'm a bit interested in why more people aren't talking about this. I get deduping can be implemented in user land and it's complicated and it's a mess. Without the means of dedupe being exposed, I'm not sure how it could play nice with streaming, which I assume is why it exists. There was a lot of drama and a lot of people stepping in. But before we get to all of that, I want to address the bit about streaming because I've learned over time that most people just don't get how streaming works. If I should do a dedicated video on this, let me know. But to quickly TLDR it, I'm gonna use an example from Guillermo. 
I think this demo from Guillermo does a great job of showcasing how streaming works. If I open this page up in the browser, the hello loads immediately, and then the world comes in after 1.5 seconds. Have you ever wondered how this works, how the content can update over time like that? Well, if we go to the network tab, we can see. So I'm going to do something a little annoying. I'm going to refresh this, try and grab the response as quickly as possible, because it makes it hard to do this in Chrome. Cool. So I just grabbed the first response. And here is what the browser gets immediately from the server. We get this meta tag, we get this H1, we get a bunch of these NBSPs, which I'll explain in a minute. And then we close the H1 tag, but then nothing else. Isn't that invalid HTML? How can you send just this and have the page load? That is how streaming works. It's not that you're sending entirely different pieces of data that are being orchestrated. It's actually quite simple. Streaming HTML is you send the first chunk of the HTML, however much you can send, and then you send down more as it's done. You can almost think of it kind of similar to how like LLMs work, where you are sending piece by piece the results as they're being rendered. But that's inherently slightly complex because if I want to have an element that is not directly below the one that I already rendered, that sucks. This example is so simple because the hello comes first and then the world comes after. And if we look at the code, I think you'll be able to understand how that works. So here we see, wait until stream data writable. This is how you send a streamed response. Return your response, content type, text HTML. Cool. Stream data. We stream this writer.write call. So this is the first HTML the user gets. Notice this NBSP thing that I mentioned before. That's because some browsers won't start rendering the HTML until they receive a certain amount, a full chunk. So when you put this here, these empty characters, it allows for those browsers, <coughs> Safari, <coughs> to handle it properly. So that's what this is here for. This is to make Safari behave. Most real websites will have enough HTML that they'll clear that threshold to have a full chunk. But if you're doing a demo like this, it doesn't, and this fixes that. And then later on, we have this promise. We have a timeout. We are grabbing the JavaScript for the confetti package, just straight from JS Deliver. And then we write the remainder, which is the world bit, and then the script tag after, and we close it. That is how you do streaming. You send some data, you do some stuff, and you send more data. It's really simple, but there's a catch, which is what if I want to render something that isn't directly below or directly after? You could do CSS hacks, which I'm sure plenty have done. I, I guess this is now becoming a dedicated streaming video. I, here I was thinking I would be able to avoid doing this, but nope. I built this demo to show how this all worked to Jose from the Elixir side of things because I thought it'd be useful to him. So this page, I've intentionally buffed out the load times on, and you'll see how long these sections are taking to come in. But how do I update that right here? Here's the HTML that the client got. The get it by 5 p.m., this is the first thing that is being rendered after the first data was sent. So this div is hidden by default because we don't want to just render it at the bottom of the HTML page. This is the HTML the server sent. But alongside that, a new script tag came in with this dollar sign RC. This is how React does what's called out of order streaming. This is the code that the React runtime and server side stuff is creating for you in order to find the place that this div actually belongs and then swap it there. And that's also what the S0 is for. That is to say, this is the zeroth streamed thing, you know, index zero, all of that shit. And that is how things get swapped. To quickly TLDR using this article, we write the HTML, and then we write more HTML with this script tag to update the page content. But that's the key, is we put the div at the bottom, and then we write this custom JavaScript to go in and put it where it actually belongs. If you want more details, annoy me in the comments. I'll do a more dedicated video about that in the future. So let's go back to the drama. What does title have to do with streaming? For example, if you're fetching some data from a database and that database's data is used to update the title, this is important because I need to be able to stream the title when I get it. Ideally, that would be part of the initial cache so it has the SEO benefits. But if I can stream that down, that's huge. But if I stream down multiple, that sucks. I, I have to highlight this realization Agora just had. Wait, the hoists. Can I just put CSS there per component? Yeah. Yeah, this is really cool stuff. So the issue here is if you're using these and you don't know what order the elements are gonna be streamed in at, you're kind of screwed because there's no deterministic way to figure out which title is going to be applied last and then become the actual title, so to speak. And as Ryan said, this is the correct behavior for some things, but Ryan, 
other Ryan, Ryan's Solid Ryan versus Remix Ryan. We'll call them Remix Ryan and Solid Ryan going forward. I guess what I'm picturing here is a scenario where this is not known at the route level, thinking with React's core perspective, and new information is discovered later after the first flush. Hoisting makes this too late. Sure, you can put it in context and change the value after, but you already streamed it. However, if the framework exposed a deduping mechanism, it could continue to update the head as it streamed intelligently. I'm not suggesting implicit deduping is necessary, but some way of being able to determine the right operation, like append and replace. Thinking of a scenario where we want to be able to update the tags in the head after it's been flushed, but before the framework is loaded, similar to how we do it with suspense. So what he's saying here is like, let's say we're looking at Twitch, which by the way, I'm currently live. When you go to Twitch, the stream has to have a title, Theo-Twitch. Notice that. Actually, you can see it here. Did you see the initial titles, lowercase Theo? Because it's just using the URL and some Go server is generating the title tag there. And the initial one that you get back from the HTML is just your username, which is lowercase. But my display name has the capital T in it. So when the page finishes loading and then the JavaScript comes in and takes over, it updates the title with its new correct information. It also includes the one for my notifications. Let's say that Twitch is actually doing this correctly and they were getting this data from database on request. Maybe the default title could be loading or Twitch. And then as the title tag gets streamed in, you wouldn't even need to run JavaScript. You could just update this immediately. Well, you have to run some JavaScript for the out of order bits, but React itself would be able to update the title for you or use the hacks that I was showing here with like the RC swaps to not even have to load React, just loading like 15 lines of JavaScript in order to update the title. Those are all things React could theoretically do, but it is not doing here. And there are real use cases for that that I would have benefited from greatly at Twitch. And the thing is calling out here with hydration is that like, you can do this fine the way I just showed you Twitch is doing it, which is you wait for all of React and all of your JavaScript to load before you start swapping those things around. But it'd be nice if you could let these short hands that are embedded do that for you. So you don't have to wait for all of React for the title at the top of your page to be correct. This is Sophie. If you don't know Sophie, she's one of the best communicators and most talented people in the React ecosystem. She's incredible. Anyways, React could dedupe, but it's not obvious which one should win. Maybe if there was one that was deepest, but what if there are two at equal depths that are competing? Definitely don't want it to depend on which resolve first, but preferring based on sibling order is also weird. They could even put a custom prop or something, but at that point, like, it should be a library. No disagreement there. It may be how every head library seems to work, but it is less than perfect and it makes any sort of deduping potentially flawed. So that's why I think this feature is confusing for me. I don't get why it exists. I imagine I would use Remix's head management if I pick it up. Same with next. The decision belongs in the router. Why would React ship it? Would either use this under the hood? Also, Sophie had a follow-up here that was useful. This is a hint that letting any component authoritatively render a title is not quite the right pattern and you should only do it in components that know they're a singleton per window. And so that ties into routing and you probably want a framework to handle it. This is interesting. And this is a theme that we'll be seeing more and more of with React drama, where the, the fact that React isn't a framework, it is a library, but you need a framework to actually use it. Some of these primitives now feel weird because in like a small example, like we saw at the beginning, just using the title tag in React is probably a great solution. But if you can't guarantee other people aren't using it other places, it's really hard to figure out what's going on. And at that point, you should use the one built into your framework, be it Remix, Next, React Router, whatever else. Or just use React Helmet. The NFL knows how to write good code, I guess. Benton, I, I bet money that the reason is framework should just handle it and you shouldn't be using React without a framework, silly, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Ricky. I don't know what Tanner's original tweet here was, but Ricky replied. I, I should start with Ricky's reply before I get into the drama. For context, Tanner is unhappy specifically because he is currently working on a new router and it's one of the most complex routers and frameworks in the React ecosystem. And it relies on a lot of behaviors in React working specific ways. And this is gonna make his life harder implementing things. What he does and doesn't have to own is shifting in front of him. And I understand why he would be frustrated. We'll get to that in a second. Thanks to Ricky Hanlon, Josh, Sophie Bits, and Ryan for answering my questions. I think I got my answer. Generally speaking, deduping is broken, so we should just author in a way that avoids the need and all metadata should be resolved before the first flush. Both of these are reasonable constraints. I agree. Metadata management is difficult. We know that if you've looked at how Next.js does it, the, the metadata tag is a, a weird thing to say the least. I open up this code base and go to the root layout. Export const metadata, manually typed as metadata. This is where you put your metadata in Next. <laughs> it's weird. At least it's route level but it is weird. So yeah, 
I sympathize there. Metadata is one of those things that's hard. I put it up there with caching and naming things. But the fact that this tag works so weird is indeed weird. But here is what Tanner had to say. Is there any official explanation or documentation for this reason? It should also now be equally obvious that a scattered Twitter thread on the subject won't suffice, especially with the just don't hold it wrong comments from the community peppered throughout. I'll be honest, deduping was an attribute of the feature that I and I think many others assumed would be included, so I was truly surprised to see this. A more actionable question. Does the following mean that I actually shouldn't get rid of the metadata management APIs of Tanstack Router? Part of my ecstatic excitement was the potential of giving devs the ability to use these new features directly and removing the need for my abstraction. Ricky replied saying that he has docs on what the behavior is, but not what the behavior isn't. Uh, did they update that to have the warning? The pitfall. I want to see on GitHub when that change occurred. React.js, React.dev. Cool. Didn't know that there was a whole separate React.js GitHub that React itself isn't in. That's a fun learning. React's Facebook slash React but the React site is react.js slash react. Okay, so this change didn't just happen. At least it was called out here. This is in the same release candidate notes that we were just reading. They do call out that you might still want a metadata library, but it's interesting that once again, if you're not super tuned in, it's relatively easy to use React wrong here. It's much less bad than screwing up with a use effect, but it's still bad enough that I understand the pushback. For Tansec, you can decide if you want to expose a meta tag API that avoids the pitfall or let users handle it. For example, Remix has a meta API, but you can also just render in route components. I also think that dedupes the wrong term here because duplicate title tags isn't the concern, right? It's about choosing different title tags in the tree and trying to pick the right one based on rendering order of depth. Trust me, I'd really love to be able to invert all of the control to the user and get rid of my abstraction. Of course, they'll always have the option regardless since I can't disable it. I still don't fundamentally agree with the decision to not do any deduping of the title and meta. While most browsers won't choke on multiple tags, the fact that React devs will easily be able to produce HTML outputs that's automatically considered bad practice by just about every search engine, crawler, or SEO tool on the market is not a great outcome. Also worth noting that Tanner has a ton of experience with SEO. He's working at an SEO startup for a while. He... Yeah. Interesting wager here. I wager we'll quickly see an uptick of SEO teams auditing their React devs on this topic. Not unlikely. It's easy to push the responsibility down to the developer and say, you just need to be aware of title and meta tags, which is what non-framework React devs have already been dealing with. It's not a great experience. It was easy enough to render multiple title tags without React, but with React now specifically handling these native tags, I expected more out of the feature. Clearly, great care was put into similar control over CSS and style precedents, which IMO has a lot of overlap on the topic of deduping the title and meta. Assuming the same level of care would be put into the title and meta system is no stretch. And if React 19 is now able to look back on the head during rendering and make changes based on deeply rendered elements in the tree, then I don't understand the pushback. For my view, this would be a great opportunity for React to lift the tide for not just every framework, but all React devs, regardless if they use a framework at all. As far as I know, there's no way to get in the middle of this API today without writing stream or string transformations and immediately risking hydration mismatches on the client. This is also an important call out. If you're changing how React is streaming things into the browser, it's really likely that React won't recognize the HTML content and will start getting angry. Regardless of any framework keeps a title or meta abstraction or not, React users will eventually be educated about these new built-in features and want to use them resulting in a regression in expectations for most frameworks that manage them. Like I said, I wanted to recommend developers use this API because it's one less abstraction or less thing to learn, and it has a wonderful developer experience. I also don't want to have to explain to them yet another rule they need to be aware of to use React. There's an interesting back and forth here of them breaking down like the fact that there is no ideal for how this would work, and I don't know how you would quickly solve this problem. There is no trivial, just do things. I like the summary from Josh. For lots of projects, we expect a metadata library will still provide a ton of value. React is solving the base case of streaming compatibility. Totally fine to use as is in some cases, but router integration is probably what most folks want, and this is what these new capabilities support. Very good call out. And I will use that to wrap up. I think the issue here is that these changes in React don't make it super clear who they're for. Is this a thing that we expect the average React dev to use and consume? Or is this a thing that's there for framework authors to iterate on and build features around? It is unclear with a lot of these features, which is for which. And you'd probably expect that a title tag in a component now being supported by React is a thing meant for the end developer, not for the framework author. So yeah. It's hard to know. To be fair, they probably don't know either when they release these features. They just know that there's demand for it amongst the authors. And if that turns out to be demand for users too, cool. If not, cool. But that's where a lot of the weirdness in this one came from.
That said, I think it's a relatively tame drama. And with that, we'll have a relatively tame ending. Peace, nerds.